So I'm sitting here with Leslie Sisson and Rosie Casto, two-thirds of Moving Panoramas. Yeah, they were cool enough to come sit down and talk to the library, so let's do it. Leslie, you were saying that you really wanted to work with these two girls. What drew you to the two of them? I'd known Karen for almost a decade or more because we went to college together in undergrad and grad school, so we were always just really good friends. And She and I started playing music together a few years ago. I was just filling in, and her other band that she'd had before this one. I loved playing with her, but that band kind of fell apart. And around that same time, I was teaching Rosie at School of Rock. I think what drew me to Rosie most was, um, it's going to sound so cheesy, but is that she has an old soul. Is that okay to say, Rosie? That's cool. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I could just tell that, uh, I mean, I'm not like this crazy weird spiritual person, but that Rosie just just had this maturity about her but also this insane talent I don't know it just kind of it kind of happened really organically we were having coffee one day and and I was like uh do you want to you want to join me on this next thing that I'm doing and I wasn't really sure what that was yet I thought maybe it was a solo record but I, I got Karen involved and I was like wait this is a band so that's it you know just you know teaching Rosie she inspired me a lot um just because you know she was she's more talented than most people that are my age, but you know, I don't really think of age as anything in this band. <clears throat> I think it's kind of cool that we have no age, <laughs> and our average age is great. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, they're they're just both really special girls, and and I've I've never done an all girl band before, and I'd done roller derby and you know done female sports, and I just kind of liked that bond that you have with with girls. So it was just something new, and it's been great. What's the value that you get out of? having that age range. I know you said that, you know, Rosie's an old old soul, but I think there's definitely still, you know, differences there and Well, Karen and Leslie have been through a lot more of life than I have. You know, especially like with the music scene, they've experienced things that I've never had a chance to because I was a lot younger than them. And so it's they're kind of like leading me through this with experienced eyes. You know, you know, when you become a musician and things start happening, you kind of make a lot of mistakes especially once you turn 21 and you're able to do a lot of things you couldn't do when you're younger. So they're kind of like guiding me in a way. It's like, okay, well, you know, you don't have to do this. So I don't ha I, I can make less mistakes. And I think that's like a really cool part of being in a band with, you know, two people that I can look up to, you know, we're all equals except, you know, on a, especially on a musician level, but with life experience, they've had, you know, a lot more than I have. I won't say how much, but <laughs> More than I have, definitely so. Do you have anything to say? I, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love you. What effect do you think Austin has on, on you musically, you know, as opposed to Brooklyn where you were living? Good question. Um, in Brooklyn, a lot of these songs are actually written in my teeny-weeny little apartment in Williamsburg, especially in the winter when it's too cold to go outside. A lot of my demos have like the hissing of the of the steam pipes in the background. <laughs> I found a lot of inspiration in that town just because culturally it's it's so inspiring and I know a lot of people that are doing things in that town that inspire me and motivate me to, you know, want to do something. And when I was writing a lot of the songs on this record, I was spending a lot of time with a lot of very talented people in that city. I came back here mostly because of music. Um, we were getting offered a lot of shows when we started doing this project, and I was actually in New York when we started this, and Rosie was still in Austin, and Karen is in Austin, um, and it was like, wow, we could actually get paid to play some music, and I've been doing stuff musically in New York, and it was hard to book shows, it was hard to get people to listen to us, and um, when I came back here, it just was like this big hug, this music hug, and I think a lot of it has to do with Hotel Vegas. Jace McNeely is the, the owner there, or one of the owners there, and he's like one of the best music curators in town. And he really has such a talented eye for putting shows together and gave us a home. And I think that the whole town watches Jason's venue. <laughs> and it's, but it's like, it's different because the music that's coming out of this town, it's super real. Um, super raw and there's all sorts of types of music and I feel like we've kind of got this cool mishmash that I've been influenced by um, especially writing newer tunes here but um, I don't see us leaving this town anytime soon because it's treated us 
better than any other city, I think. And the other, other thing I'd like to add, I know it's, it's a very wordy uh, reply, is that there's the Sims and Ham Foundation here. And that was another thing that drew me back. Coming down here, I, I, have, I have a really affordable health care, cheap, free. Um, I mean, it's, it's free, but it's also um, really cheap when you go see a doctor if you need to. But the Sims Foundation was, is, was crucial. Anyway, long story long, I mean, the, this, I, the, 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 there's just something special in this town that no other town has musically. And I'm very proud to say that we are from here. Long answer, sorry. <laughs> Edit that. <laughs> no, it's all good. You mentioned the mishmash, and there are all these different styles here, and they all seem to have a voice here. You know, it's not like, well, there's only one sound, and that's the only one that gets any play. What do you think the common thread is between all these different styles? I, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I think what unifies them is really a lot of it's the dedication of the musicians to their craft. I mean, they're obviously all different styles of music. And you can always argue that they came from one starting point. And they all evolved into these different things. But really, it's how awesome musicians put all of their effort into it. I mean, they've got obviously, you have to work a day job, especially in this town. But, you know, it's, it's not like they go venture off and do all these other things as well. It's like music is their one thing. And it doesn't matter what style it is. And when you go and see a really good show, you can definitely tell that. It could be a country show or it could be an indie pop show it doesn't matter you're still gonna you know see these great musicians coming out and performing the one thing that they really want to do i concur again and i think the another common thread is that you can go see music any night of the week here it's just happening non-stop in some towns it's just a weekend thing um and in like new york you can do the same thing in new york but there's a community here we found ourselves in a really cool community, and it's in that whole Hotel Vegas scene where it's friends and fans. And, and it just started from that hub, and it grows out. But even in all of these little pockets around this city, it, it, there is that commonality that there's uh, just a really great musical community here, too. A lot of support. You hadn't played in an all-female band before, and you kind of mentioned that it was really cool. What has that experience been like? I'll say something. I'll, I'll, I'll say something. I'll let Rosie say something. I've been in, I've all, usually only been the only girl in most bands. A couple of bands I've been in, there were two girls, but most of the time I've been the only girl in a, in a band or on tour. The conversations are different. And we just, I never had a sister. Um, I always wanted one. But I feel like the three of us are kind of like tomboys that have this great sister bond. <laughs> we're really great at our craft, or okay, they're really great at their craft, and I'm really floored by them. <laughs> I'm just okay. Um, so I look up to you guys musically, but I also, I, I just, I love our spirit. And, um, and I love that there's no weird sexual tension. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that was kind of an issue in some of my old projects. And it wasn't something that ever caused anything to go wrong. But there's just, it's, it's just really special, a good, a good, cool bond. And I also like that sometimes we just take breaks and talk about boys. <laughs> There are a lot of boy talks at yeah. practice. That's an extra hour added on to practice. Yeah. No, I think it's really cool. I mean, I think Leslie covered a lot of it, but, you know, with any band, you should be a group of friends, you would think. And, I mean, that's the only way you can really get along and make music together. If you hate each other, then you end up like a lot of the bands that, you know, fall apart, and you'll never go anywhere. So I think, you know, being with Leslie and Karen, it... It really helps with that. There's just a good friendship between all of us. And, you know, we all kind of have the same interests. And, you know, there are a lot of guys out there that will invite you to be in their band just because you're a girl. And whether it's, you know, because they have a crush on you or something like that. Or they're like, oh, this is a great gimmick. Right. And so that doesn't happen with us. I mean, I don't think we've ever even thought about being all girls. And, oh, well, we'll make it because we're all girls now. And no, it's always been about the music. It's not about pushing, you know, that because we're female. Right. And so it, there's just no there's no pressure that you're a girl. You're just a musician, and I think that's really cool. I concur. <laughs> the name Moving Panoramas, when I first heard it, it definitely brought to mind this idea of like a visual, you know, a visual experience. How does your music create visuals for listeners? You know, what kind of 
what kind of images are you immersing people in? Good question. <laughs> I guess when when I was playing with Karen um, in this band called Black Forest Fire, um, it started reminding me of the music that I was listening to when I was first writing music, and it was stuff from the 90s. But it was also the once I stepped out of that phase and found music that was more... Um, what, the word that I would des- use to describe it is panoramic. The sound is more stereo. It's more spread out, like My Bloody Valentine and like and uh, Lush and uh, Spiritualized. These bands that were just like, when I discovered them, everything was just so wide. So visually, that always painted a, a very like surround sound for me. And I always wanted to to do something like that. But a lot of the bands that I w- was in, were they were more like throughout my, my career I've been acoustic or or um, punk rock, or, you know, and I never really got a chance to, 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 to address those roots. The stuff I was writing was definitely heading down that path, but I've been, I was a sideman for like a decade in other people's bands and just picking up tricks from everyone. But So we, we were originally called Panoramas, and I searched and didn't find a, a band that was called Panoramas or The Panoramas, but as we were working on this record that took forever, we, a guy from France wrote me on Facebook and was like, I had a band called Panoramas in the 80s, and I wish I could say take the name, but I think a Sony or somebody owns it. And uh, sure enough, I hired a lawyer, and it was it was it was a name that was already owned, so we we avoided that. I mean, when we were thinking, we were, had to figure out a new name by South by Southwest this past year because that was when we were kind of really launching nationally as a band, and I was down to the wire, and then that came to me one day. I know the exact date that it came to me, February 20th. Um, no, February 19th. No, February 20th. Well, one of those two days. February, fe- February 19th or 20th. No, the 20th, February 20th. I remember why. Um, and I remember sitting there, like, looking at the name and thinking, well, that paints a really cool picture that really goes well with what we're doing. And I asked the girls what they thought, and I asked one of the biggest – Critics of him all, Jason McNeely from Hotel Vegas, who's like, nope, that name sucks. Nope, that name sucks. Nope, that name sucks. And then he was like, that's not bad. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, if he thinks it's going to look okay on a poster at his venue, I think that's our name. That's a very long answer, Rosie. Do you have anything to add? I concur. <laughs> <laughs> what are you most proud of as a group? Well, I think just sticking through it is the biggest thing because... You know, you hear a lot of a lot of bands. You know, it, it gets stressful, especially when thing the ball starts rolling and you either jump on it or you slip and fall. And I I don't think we've slipped and fallen yet, or I don't think we ever will. I think we've persevered and pushed through. You know, playing the opening slots on Tuesday night, and I think that's a that's a really cool thing is that we're able to like to do headlining shows now. People are actually coming to see us. I think that's, and that's another thing is I'm really proud that, oh yeah, our music is cool enough and we performed well enough that people are actually coming out to see us. So I just think the, the thing I'm most proud about this band is the hard work we put into it. I concur. (laughs) I'm proud of our band, proud of the girls that I play with because like Rosie said, it's not easy to to pay your dues and you know get paid well actually the crazy thing is we haven't had a lot of shows where we haven't gotten paid from the start that's the whole reason why I came back to Austin but you know there are some shows that nobody's there and and that's how it was in the beginning and it can be discouraging um I'm proud of this record that we did together I never thought that I would have anything I've ever done on vinyl I mean I've been in bands and been on vinyl many times but I never thought the words that I've written and the guitar parts that I've written would be on vinyl, so I'm proud of that. Um, I'm proud of our families because our pa- our families really support uh, her family. Rosie, your family is at every show. Yep. Um, my family's in Dallas; they can't do that, but they would if they could. But I just just that they encourage us to to follow our heart logically, which we've been doing. You know, we're not going out on tour right now because we'll go broke. We really want to. I mean, it, we should be out on the road right now after this record came out. But um, there wasn't anybody that wanted to help us out. 
and we would have had to book it ourselves and it would have cost us a lot of money and we would have been playing some of those shows to five people and and so we've got to just I'm proud of how organically things have happened and the patience that these girls have had because it's because it's been it's been a weird road but it's been really rewarding and and um I don't know I'm just proud I'm proud of proud of no, we get to, I'm proud of being doing podcasts, <laughs> but um, I don't know. There's a, I'm proud of everything about this. Um, but mostly, I'm, a pr- I'm very proud of the music that we're, we're we're doing together. It's, I think I would go see it. I like it. So, yeah, this is a this is a library podcast. Do you guys have any books or musics or movies? Uh, the library has all those things that have been influential to you, or you just really enjoy you just keep going back to it, keep reading it again or watching it again or listening again? Where'd he go? Oh, no. Oh, wait, I got to think. I got, I got two. Okay. I, I, I got two. Um, I'm trying to remember the... I can't remember the authors of these books. Um, well, I know, I know the author of one of them. Um, when I wrote the song Harmony on the record, um, it's about my mom, and she she had a rough time. And she was homeless for a bit. She had a drug problem. And when I wrote that song, I was reading a song of... When I wrote that song, I was reading a book called The Glass Castle. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I've read that book twice. And I don't read a lot of books twice. I read them once and let them go. Um, it's going to sound really cliche, but I've, re- I've, written, I've read On the Road, On the Road before. Yeah. And I started reading it again, so I might finish that one again. Um, and then there's a book that, that the, this guy, Raul Hernandez, who's the music editor for The Chronicle, gave me. And... It's about a musician in town who, who went through a traumatic event similarly to what I went through. And it's called Never the Same Again. And I'm reading that right now. And it was written by him. His name's Jesse. There's so many. Okay, Rosie, do you got it now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to hog it. So I remember when I was like maybe a freshman in high school, I read this book called I Want to Be Your Joey Ramone <laughs> by uh, Stephanie Conehart. <laughs> and it's about this girl whose father is a musician and her mother left when she was little to go off and be a groupie for bands. So when she's a teenager, she starts her own punk band and makes it somewhat successful. And I don't know, I just remember like that kind of badass, independent attitude, especially when you're a young person. It really struck me and um, made me want to be more hardcore. <laughs> made me want to, it's like, oh, cool, they're writing stories about this. Maybe I could do that too. And so... That was a, a big influence on me. Um, yeah, I think that's the, that's the biggest one. That's cool. So last thing, people that enjoy your music, they want to learn more about you guys, give us the links. Where can they find you? Where can they find your music? Where can they follow the things you guys are doing? Movingpanoramas.com will, will be the portal to wherever you want to go. You can find our Facebook, our Twitter, videos, links to stream the record fun pictures, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, we're, we're, we're spreading. Yeah. We're like a, s- a slow burn. Be cool. Don't be a fool. Stay in school. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's it for today. Thanks again, Moving Panoramas, coming through. Really enjoyed it, and hopefully you enjoy listening. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye, Austin. Bye, Austin.